My name is Carol Peters, and in this show, we'll be making beautiful hand-painted wine glasses. But before we actually start painting these glasses, we're going to find out what goes inside. You guessed it, the wine. Thank you for letting us um, come and, and join your party and, and ask about what you're doing today with your harvest. And uh, just tell us something about yourself. Well, uh, I'm originally from Santa Cruz. My wife Carolyn here is from uh, Wichita Falls, Texas. I've been in Gilroy about 12 years and uh, have two beautiful kids. Enjoy the uh, countryside out here and I was lucky enough to find this very special piece of property. Now James and I are upstairs and tell us about this area, James. It's a beautiful home. Well, actually, uh, years ago, 15, 16 years ago, when we were living in Scotts Valley, I had this recurring dream. Uh, and I was riding my motorcycle down a road and there was an old man with a for sale by owner hand, uh, sign in his hand. And right when he's pounding it into the ground, I drive up. And so he led me up a driveway, and then it opened up into a, a view just like this. And one day, I rode up here, and as soon as I saw it, I knew that was the one. It makes you feel like you're not even in Gilroy. And the colors are so rich. I mean, all the oranges and the greens and, and the earth tones. I mean, it really is spectacular. Now we're out in the uh, vineyard, and I'm going to have a lesson. So let's see how we actually pick it. Tell us how. See, if they're kind of like this, you don't really want to pick them. They have to be more like this. This is your best technique. You snip it, and all of that goes in there, even those little bugs. Yeah. You put it right here so it's like a least an inch away from the um, actual grapes. Okay. So if you're off, you want to look for any green ones. So see this one, how it's kind of green, you just want to kind of throw that. Most of them we're going to put in this crusher to stemmer and, and that's going to process them for us but some of them, uh, Carol Peters here is going to strip down to almost nothing and get in there and stomp these grapes. Are you going to get in there with me? Your, right. your wish is my command. Let's do it! <laughs> sure, James. <laughs> Come on, you said you would get in. This is Cabernet out of our side, side vineyard. And uh, we basically just go through, get rid of some of the leaves. They're going to get crushed and put through, and the stems are going to come out here. And all the grape and all the pulp and all the juice are going to come out there. And those get uh, composted and then put back into the vineyard in the form of fertilizer. What is your favorite wine that you make? Syrah. This valley is known for Syrah. Actually, all of the wineries around here make excellent Syrah and Petite Syrah. And um, are you going to actually share some of that with us later? I'll give it to you right now. How's this? All right. It's kind of early in the morning, but <laughs> thank you. Here's to Carol and creativity. What a creative woman. How lucky are we to know her, huh? Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Thank you very much for having us today. My pleasure. Wonderful wine, wonderful afternoon, and it's a beautiful day in Gilroy. James? We're here on location at the beautiful home of Julie Melendres. Julie, thank you so much for letting us come and, and just have fun here and relax. It's wonderful to be in another location. I love my studio, don't get me wrong, but this is fabulous. Thanks, Carol. Well, tonight we're doing a fundraiser for Gav TV, and we'll be painting wine glasses and learning about some regional wines. And we're just basically going to have a party, Carol. All right. I can't wait. So we have a special guest who knows a whole lot about wine. He actually bought some great wines to share. And we're going to have a lot of girls in there that are ready to party, have a good time, and paint. And if you want to have a party in your home like this, it's so much fun. And we encourage you to do it. So let's get started and join the girls. Let's go. Let's go.
kitchen, and everyone is seated. Welcome, ladies. Thank you for coming Thank you. tonight. Thank you. And uh, we met prior to the show, and everyone actually picked a design and traced it on the glass so that we could start painting a little faster. So I'm going to have everyone just introduce themselves and tell what they're going to paint on the glass. Hello, I'm Julie Melendres, and I'll be painting the San Jose Sharks. Hello, my name is Monica Villar, and I'm going to be painting the golf thing. I'm Kat Felice, and I'm working on music notes. I'm Karen Titus, and I'm doing a Christmas snippet. I'm Brenda Shazanskis, and I'm painting a Tuscan flower. I'm Sue Ferrodi, and I'm doing a purple lotus flower. I'm Yvonne Felici, and I'm doing a little black dress. I'm Melanie Troini, and I'm painting a glass for my sister for Christmas. Beautiful. They're great. They're great. And so now I'm going to actually just show how you can paint a glass yourself. And if you can see, these are all just plain glasses, any shape or size. And they've traced the design on. And I'll give you a step-by-step -step little instruction. And you can do this at home. Have a party. Have your girlfriends over. Have some wine and just paint. And you have some wonderful gifts. And you can have gifts for all kinds of occasions. So uh, basically what you do is you take some alcohol. And uh, this is just rubbing alcohol. It's not in case you make a mistake. You just don't try to drink it. <laughs> and um, basically, you just take the alcohol and you clean your glass off. And then that will take all the fingerprints off. So it's nice and clean and it's ready to go. And then basically, you get um, anything that you want to do. I kind of uh, drew it on the glass and then I traced it from the glass because it was easier for me. But you can take something out of a magazine, you can take something off the internet, you can draw your own, whatever inspiration you have. You put your design inside the glass and you tape it in. And if it's too small, if you find it's too small, just go to the copy machine and enlarge it. And put it inside the glass. These are actually markers that are made for glass and you can get these at any craft store. So what you would do is you take your marker and just trace all the lines. Very simple. Okay, and that, that's really comforting for a lot of people that can't draw. But if you can draw, go ahead, just, you know, do your own thing. You take the paper out, and then these are actually enamels that are made for glass, and they are opaque enamels. Opaque works better because you can't see through it. But sometimes maybe you want a very, very transparent design. You can buy these also in transparent. So check it out. If you want it opaque, make sure it says that. If you want it transparent, then get that as well. You can get them in kits where you get a lot of these little tiny, tiny uh, colors. And that's a great way to go because it really doesn't take much to paint a glass. If you buy a little kit, you can paint several glasses. There's something in the kit that's called a clear medium. A clear medium is used instead of water. So if your paint seems kind of thick, and you don't want to add a lot of water to it, just add the medium and it will extend the paint. So that's a good thing to know. Um, there's a lot of markers that are colored. These are all for glass, glass markers. So if you wanted to actually color something in with a marker, then of course you could do that. So there's a lot of supplies you can get for glass. The brushes that are um, used are actually pretty soft, but they're not the real floppy watercolor brush. There is a little bit of a stiffness to them. And uh, the number two seems like a really good size. I have some flat ones, and I also have some rounded, soft ones for small lines. So you need that. We have two sets of water, one to wash the brush out. And I found that this paint dries really, really fast and hard. And it's, it actually doesn't come off very easy. So we want to keep you know, kind of taking uh, in between putting the brush in water. And the alcohol will clean up any mess that, if you make a mistake, you can take a Q-tip and dip it in alcohol and just get rid of it. <laughs> Same thing with a little toothpick. If you want to just go around an edge that you, you know, kind of went too far, you can take it and clean it up. So I've taken the paint, I've put it out in the palette, and I just wanted to show you, this is the same um, design finished. And the girls will um, work on theirs tonight and actually have their design finished as well. So you can see that you can really embellish these. You can put uh, little stones on afterwards. Paint the bottom. That's always last because what you do is turn it upside down and paint it. And then if you haven't finished, you don't want to do that. So uh, if you need something like a skin tone that's not inside the, um, the kit, 
of course you can mix. The idea is to follow your lines. And I'm going to actually mix this skin tone because a lot of people say, how do you make a skin tone? So I'm going to take a little bit of water and my brush. First thing I'm going to do is grab some white because that's a good base for anything. And if you have like a, a peach color, that's great. I, I didn't see one out here. So I'm going to start if you just have like primary colors. Orange and blue make a brown. So a lot of times people say, oh, you're going to use blue in the skin. Um, not very much. It just dulls down the orange and makes it um, kind of a, a good color for a skin. Add the white to it. And you come out with a, a kind of a skin tone, which is pretty nice. If you want to bump it with a little warmth, you can just add a speck of red. It's hard to see because this is a very uh, small area. I want to make it a little darker. I'll add some more, maybe some orange. Now she's going to be too orange. So there you go. I think you can see that. It looks like a skin. Can you guys see mm -hmm. how that, that's mm -hmm. starting to look like skin tone? And that's just orange and blue make a brown, but it's a nice warm brown. And then just take like a tiny speck of red, and that warms it up just a little bit. And I did that here. One thing when you're painting the glass, if I know it's hard for you to see um, on television. I'm just going to stick this towel inside so you can see the design. Whenever you're painting something, paint with one stroke and try to follow your outside lines. For example, if I'm doing her arm, I'm not going to paint it up and down like that because that will flatten it out. Whether you think it will or not, it really does. So what you want to do, and I'm trying to paint this backwards, you take and you just follow the arm and follow it around. So it's like one stroke around. It probably won't cover the first time. If you keep going back and forth with this type of paint, what happens is it keeps pulling it up and you're going to see through it. So just let it dry and then go on to something else. Fill in all the skin tone at once, okay? And then wash your brush out and start with another color and then keep repeating around. I, if you wanted to write on the glass, I've written happy birthday on this. So you can just take the marker and you can draw right on the base. You can write your happy birthday. You can make pack, you know, a package. You can uh, put whatever you'd like on there. And, um, and then, of course, paint it. And then after everything is painted, turn it over and paint the bottom. The one thing that you do need to remember is after you're through, you put the glass in a cool oven, um, cold oven. And then you turn the oven on to 350 and bake this glass for a half hour, turn the oven off, leave it in there, and then when the oven is cool, take it out and you're ready to, to drink out of it. After you had a drink, then you wash it with by hand. Do not put it in the dishwasher. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> so everybody, that's it. That was the demo and uh, we're gonna just paint away Great. and have some appetizers and Great. Um, too bad you know there's always women painting it's like oh my hey, god Hey, how, how are you? Hi, Good evening. David. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind me crashing your party I uh, oh, heard some oh. laughter I saw some food through the window so oh, I uh, right. just thought I'd help myself to the atmosphere. Excellent. And I brought some champagne from France. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Nothing gets a party started like champagne. In fact, Absolutely. Uh, Sadly, I don't think we drink champagne enough. We kind of treat it as a beverage that could only be enjoyed for celebrations. But in reality, it's a great way to enjoy food. It cleans your palate, and it actually is very, very food friendly. Uh, quick trick, uh, make sure that you uh, do not keep the, uh, or point the cork away from folks you'd want to put out an eye, of course. The trick for getting the, the cork out is twist the bottle. Don't twist the, the cork, twist the bottle. And you want to make sure to not get too much of a pop because that releases all the bubbles. So you just want it real gentle. Wow. So we brought, some, uh, we brought some great wines. The thing I was trying to focus on with some of these wines were focused on some regional aspects of the wine. So we've got a great Chardonnay from Jason Stevens, which is an upcoming local wine. We've got some wonderful uh, Rhone Blend wine, Threesome, from Liao. And that's what wine should be. It should be playful. It should be fun. And we shouldn't overthink it, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. We tend to put too much value on wine. We talk about it too much. And really, we don't need to... Uh, to think it, we need to drink it. So I'm going to pour you some champagne. All right. Thank you. This is a wonderful treat. Thanks a lot. My, my wow. Best, uh, don't, don't overthink it. Drink it. I like that. Uh, no, it's stolen, just like everything. But the, the best thing about wine, too, is you guys are completely in the atmosphere 
that really enhances what wine is all about. And wine should be enjoyed in the company of friends with food and, and frivolity. Uh, we shouldn't treat wine like a cocktail. Uh, it truly enhances food, and food enhances wine, and that's what really, really makes uh, a great party. So, cheers. Wow, cheers. thank you so much. The nice, uh, the nice thing about wine, too, is uh, there's great wines all over the world. Uh, I love wines that are food friendly, again, because it kind of goes with the party, it goes with food, it goes with friends. Uh, and you can find wine that you can afford every day. Wine doesn't have to be expensive to be good. In fact, most of the bottles that we are featuring tonight are under $20. Uh, this is a, a very uh, select vineyard champagne, an authentic champagne, a cuvee. And uh, this is only uh, about $29 a bottle, and it's absolutely delicious. It's really delicious. It's delicious. So, of Thank course, I'll you. leave that for you to enjoy. We also have a wonderful uh, Riesling Cabernet. Uh, Cabernet is a great, great food-friendly wine. It's slightly sweet. And the best thing about some of these wines, too, is they're very low in alcohol. Uh, sometimes wines are made too alcohol heavy. It doesn't provide enough balance. But if you find a nice wine, like this is only 8% the Riesling, and you can fully enjoy a nice glass and not feel like uh, you're about to be knocked out. So uh, a wine should be balanced. It should be elegant. should be nice acidity and good fruit. That's what you're looking for. Uh, one of my favorites is this Chateau Couffron. It's a Bordeaux wine. Uh, it's not from a popular region of Bordeaux, but it's only about $12 a bottle. And it's affordable every day, wow. and it's perfect with food. So uh, if you get yourself in contact with some local wineries, that's a great way to enjoy wine, to get to meet people. But I also recommend getting familiar with a nice wine merchant, because a good wine merchant can find you the wines that you want, that you can drink every day, and that you can afford. So uh, drink up, cheers, and uh, enjoy the painting. Thank you. you Thank bet. you. Cheers. Oh, really I, appreciate I need to, uh, you. I broke, have... I broke the uh, faux pas. I have to have wine in the glass, and then we cheer. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's perfect. Very nice. Mm. This is my kind of painting show. That's right, exactly. <laughs> As it should be. Yeah. The nice thing about wine, too, you guys, it, it, it totally reminds me of art because every artist like you guys are doing are interpreting differently. And wine is the same way as wineries are making wine, as winemakers are trying to, to put their stamp into a bottle of wine. And remember, art is so unique to every individual. So that's, again, lessening the focus on points and ratings and medals and all that. Not everyone is going to like every wine. Taste it. If you like it, that's all that matters. That's right. Don't overthink it. Drink it. And how do you, I just have a question because I just, uh, I went to BevMo and it had all um, those little signs, 86 points. Yeah. How do you know what that means? Yeah, uh, that's, just, you know, again, it's kind of a subjective take uh -huh. on somebody saying that this is what I rate a wine. But that's what I'm saying. I kind of wish we'd steer away from that because I think we put too much emphasis on points. We put too, em too much emphasis on a, a gold medal or an award that the wine has won. Uh, th like I said, there are great wines that aren't rated high. There's wines that are rated really high that people don't like, and there's nothing wrong with that. So again, my, my suggestion is uh, find styles of wine, drink wine seasonably, drink wines you can afford, and don't be afraid to experiment, just like you would with art, with different mediums, uh, or with food. You know, you want to keep experimenting. You'll find something that you like. You'll find something that you can afford and share with friends. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Okay, ladies. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, girls, I think we should go have some appetizers. Wow, you got a we, bar. We, we, wow. We know we know girl.
everything looks good. So Very good. Yeah, so uh, when did you start getting interested in wine, David? Um, actually, I've always enjoyed wine, but I've never, honestly, I want people to believe it's taken it too seriously. Uh -huh. I, I like it real simplified. I love it with food. Um, and like I said, that's just that's yeah. the way I am. I, cool. I consider myself a wine enthusiast. My passion right. is nonprofit work, but I consider myself an enthusiast. Mm -hmm. But I love shopping. I love getting a great bottle of wine. I love finding that bargain wine. I love something that really, like I said, enhances the flavor yeah. of food. But I don't treat it like a cocktail. I never go home and have a glass of wine. I'll have a really? scotch or something else. Is that I love right? I love yes, I <laughs> because I don't think it's enjoyable uh, because it, it really is meant to be in this atmosphere. That's my personal and taste. do you personally go out and find these, or do you have somebody that finds them for you? I, I talk. I, I do a little bit of looking around, uh -huh. because I try to find a wine I can afford. And like I said, my favorite thing is finding wine that's about $15 a bottle or less. And uh, this is only about $12 a bottle. This is only about $12 a bottle. Uh, some of the local wines, a little bit more. But uh, they're, they're unique. They're food-friendly, affordable. <laughs> And uh, actually, kind of look expensive, and they're not. So, they do, and yeah. they're so excellent. It's all they're really good, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Exactly. But, uh, I, I work through a couple wine merchants. Uh, one's up in Redwood City. There's another one up in Berkeley. But a good wine merchant will find you wine that you like that you can afford. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what? going to show their finished glass and then we'll have a toast and we'll probably have a toast not out of the glass that you just painted but <laughs> <laughs> a clean one because you have to bake it yet and then wash it by hand okay. okay okay everyone has painted their glass it's the end of the night so I'm gonna have everyone show the beautiful job they did they're awesome and all different Thanks so much, Carol. This has been such a fun experience. Thank you, David, for all the wine. This has just been great, the, the entire staff. San Jose Sharks, go! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this has been, has been a wonderful time. Um, yes, Miss is coming. Let it snow. Thank you. Let it snow. Let it snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it snow. Thanks, Carol. <laughs> Thanks, David. We had a great time. You're a great teacher. Oh. Really <laughs> enjoyed it. I didn't know I had some hidden talent, so that was nice to see. Thank you. Thank you, this has been great. Honey, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. She's right. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, David. Thank you, Julie, for hosting all of us. This has been great. Yes. Oh, yeah, Julie. <laughs> this is my little black dress, and I amazed myself. I can't believe I did this. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank Julie and Carol and David. Thank you. Well, this is my glass for my sister for Christmas, so I have one Christmas present out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Carol. I've learned a lot. And thank you, Julie. Thank you, David. My friends, cheers. Carol, you're amazing, and thank you for letting us be part of this. It was a thank lot of fun. You. I'd like to thank everyone involved. Of course, Julie Melendez and their opening her beautiful home. The crew at Gav TV, 
Marilyn Abad Cardinelli, Joe Cardinelli, Sean, Pablo, Teresa, and Barbara. Thank you so very much. And I just want to say ciao for now and join us next time. Grab some wine and get going, yeah. Yeah, the champagne is amazing. Okay. Yeah, now we can really watch. Thank you so much. Look at this. Everybody needs to eat. Yeah, nobody's touching anything. It's hard to paint eat and and think and think, yes. Yeah. So this is show number six? Eight. Eight. Oh, okay. Ooh. I don't want to drink too much and then oh, I forgot. I don't have to say more than All right. I don't have to say more than uh we're gonna keep some glasses in. Want to do it again? Is this going to run with the credits? I think we're yeah, going to do a wine label. Oh, awesome. Wine, designing wine label. Designing wine label. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.